<clears throat> when we last gathered, Yashua and Henry decided that they were going to take a bit of a walk and see if they could get their hands on anything new that could help them with their coming mission. During that walk, they met a shopkeep <clears throat> whose name was Cuban. He did a magical reading for them of sorts and helped them to understand their own innate magical abilities. Afterwards, they met a familiar friend, so to say for now, who happened to be in the process of being harassed by some people who should have been bothered in the first place. Once they were dealt with, they decided to bring them back for questioning. But, and when they got back to the office, it happened upon a scene where Lion was in the process of being strangled by both Cynthia and Draper, as it had been found out that he was relaying information to the enemy and was discovered to be a double agent aiming to sabotage the group and get them killed, so to say. Once he had been rightfully dealt with, it was then explained by Andreva that she had dealt with betrayal before and wasn't all that willing to deal with it again. Additionally, as Lion's body faded away into the ether, he left behind a shard of a of an emerald that, when it was touched by Henry, everyone heard the sharp swing of a blade across the air and the neighing of a horse. No one really bothered to question it as the shard was pocketed, probably to be used later at some point in time, who knows. As Jet, our familiar face, described her past situations that led to her being harassed and the predicament that she's in, Rosalia explained to her that with the sickness that is currently plaguing her family, they don't really have a lot of time left if a certain procedure isn't performed. Once Francesca had been woken from her slumber, due to her going hard and setting up the attack plan for today's events, when she became aware of Lion's sabotaging, she worked through her anger, but then she very quickly <coughs> rerouted the plan and came up with a newer, more efficient one. And with Francesca's final phone call, she called the captain of her task force, said captain being Angela. She didn't spend too much time letting the party know how happy she was to hear from them again. But once that was done, Francesca and Zero unveiled their hidden trump card weapons just in case they need to be used. And from there, our story will continue. So, you all have your orders. You all know what to do. I'm not going to spend any more time going over the obvious. We've got a cult to stop. And Francesca, Hi, see, baby. looks across everyone. She motions to Cynthia to make sure all of you are fully healed and ready to go. To which she pulls out a golden vial from a drawer, rips the top off of it, throws it in the air, and... All of you are now back at full HP and NP.
and if you have it, special resources. Oh. So with that being said, everyone that is a part of the mission begins to pile out of the office and get to their destinations. Mel, please roll a 1d10. Why? <laughs> you hear a small but soft whispering in your ear. And you look, you look above you. And you can see what appears to be a a small glowing life form above your head. Hey, listen. <laughs> hmm. Can I? Sp yes, you may speak to it. The fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well. Um. I don't really know who or what I am, aside from, I suppose, being some kind of fairy. Um, oh. I, I was drawn to you for reasons that even I don't understand, but I think I'm supposed to be here and help you out in whatever way that I can. So, uh, that, that's me. You know, you, okay, what's your name then? I mean, secret weird life form theory. I don't have one. Hmm. 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 Well, um, do you want to pick your own name? I feel like, I feel like it's very off brand of me to just name you. Um, I, uh, you're putting a lot of pressure on me, you know? Um, I mean, you don't need to think about it right now, <laughs> since, you know, we just met, but I feel like you have no ill intention, so if you do feel drawn, as you said before, you know, let it be faith, then you have a lot of time. Try and pick your name for yourself, because I won't be doing it. So enjoy. Uh, oh, oh, okay. And after you say that, she cautiously sits on your shoulder. Oh, I have a, I have a bird. <laughs> well, to be fair. Hmm. Can I like? Can I poke it? Yes? Okay. I poke I poke. Do I need to roll to poke it? <laughs> no. I wanna see it. Let's see if like fairy dust like flies out of it if I just you know. If I just do a little uh, touch, like poke. Uh since you said that uh roll on one D four. I don't know. Hope you don't end up impaling it when you poke it. Okay. No, I hope not. <laughs> now I'm going to roll my own 1d4. What? Uh, you see a couple specks of dust come off of her. <laughs> <laughs> and when they graze your hand, for a moment you feel a, a kind of a tingly sensation, but... Nothing really comes of it. That's cute. Henry whispers to Yashua, Is Mel talking to herself? <laughs> oh no, fuck That's not. a good question. Can we see the fairy, or she's we the only can. one who can see it? We can't, she can only see it. A higher level. <laughs> mm, oh no. Hmm. Actually. Wait, I thought you guys could see it, but not no, understand I, it. He not never. He never mentioned anything about us seeing it, just you. Well, it says only the person can see it. So yeah, that's it, what I'm it, it does it. say she's the only one who can 
Speak to and understand. Speak and understand it. it. Mm. Doesn't say you but can't nothing's see stopping it. you from teaching it. You can see. Okay, so you guys however, can see it, but you just don't understand it. However, I am going to say roll perception to see if you do see it. Oh, mm. perfect. Oh, okay. Character After you. Perception. Okay. I'm going to throw my own dice. Holy this. shit, I almost pulled the 20. <laughs> well. Alright. Uh, upon looking over to Mel, all of you can see uh, something that was not there before. And Dreva looks over, she said, Oh, hey, nice fit. Where the hell did you get a fairy from? <laughs> Mm. That's a fairy? <laughs> well, you see. I didn't necessarily... Um, I didn't get a fairy. It just kind of spawned. Uh. I look- okay, wait, hold on. We played in the gaming side, like... We played in a gaming company before this, right? Yes. Okay, I look at all of them. I'm just like, y'all remember Zelda? Um... Unless We're it's like not a... part of the earth. So when you like... say Zelda, Draver responds, You have Zelda where you're from? <laughs> I look at Draver like, Draver, it's not all about you! Anyway! Uh, but, oh, okay. I know about Zelda, but I never actually played it. Ah, there's like this one pixie who just goes like, Hey, listen, hey, listen. And that's, yeah, just came out of nowhere kind of thing. Honesty. Oh, that sounds horrifying. I hope that this one doesn't annoy you. <laughs> I look menacingly at Fairy, because I don't know its name. Um, Henry looks at the fairy with hungering eyes. Is it edible? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, the fairy very quickly uh, hides in Mel's hair after hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I make up a- like, can, wait, can I roll, like, um, deception? Wait, is deception a thing? What are you exactly rolling deception for? I just want to say, if you eat it, you will die. Oh, okay. Do I have a deception? Oh, shit! Why won't you roll intimidation? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, that was horrible. You gotta roll intimidation, you just scare the shit out you're of You're right, you're right, I'll roll intimidation. No, 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 it's too late. Oh! <laughs> you got two nat ones in a row. <laughs> yeah, my bad, never mind. I don't wanna that fucking- That berry is getting eaten today. <laughs> I, I, I pull my sword out. You attempt to convince Henry to stay as far away from your fairy as possible, but your efforts fall on deaf ears as oh my, yeah, your fairy becomes even more frightened of him. I attempt to grab it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say no. Oh. I'm gonna roll stealth. Why? <laughs> I want to roll stealth and then just knock him out. <laughs> you have a mission. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, we can pour a bucket of water. Here, bitch. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I go invisible. <laughs> nah, nah. You d you don't just turn invisible like that. I could. Nah. You gotta roll twenty for that. Yeah. So. Uh... I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna roll stealth. Hmm. And then a simple. Persuasion, and I'll be like, <laughs> "Okay, what are you, what are you trying to persuade here?" I'm trying to persuade him not to eat the fucking fairy. Okay, does that, does that like, does that count? Yeah, cause right. I, ro I rolled my own d20 for that, and you, you passed. So, well, you two are doing that. I want to take uh, a quick minute to talk to. Uh, Zero over here and ask about the armor if that's what he turned my your falcon armor into. Uh, so no, I still have your original armor. I just made hmm. a. <laughs> I made a sentient modified version of it. So while you they... installed an AI into it. More or less. 
what I did was that I took its original um, power capabilities and the potential that I personally saw within it, and I admittedly went a bit overboard with my modifications because, well, when you're dealing with a code, you kind of want to pull out all the stops to stop them. So, as you can see, it's been outfitted with several different weapons. Its flight uh, capacitors are significantly better than the original model, and as he begins to start gushing and going on and on and on, uh, please roll intelligence. All of us, or just King? Just Yashua. You're so used to calling me King, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I am. PlayStation. Uh, you said intelligence, right? Yep. Okay. He almost starts talking at a level and a speed of which you are unable to comprehend, but he doesn't go too far over your head. And he ends his explanation off with moral of what I just said. Uh, I took what you gave me, made it better, made a sentient version of it for emergency purposes. But, I don't have the resources to make another one. This is the only one we got. And the android? Um... Long story short... You see Chief over there? This is her. In mechanical format. And oh, that's terrifying. Far more aggressive when given the command to be aggressive. And when Zero says aggressive twice, uh, the Valkyria android turns and says, awaiting orders. Oh shit. Give me a target to destroy, now. And Zero yeah, says, no stand kidding. down, stand down, not yet. Henry runs up to the Valkyria <laughs> robot and tries to give it a command. It completely ignores you. Aww. <laughs> okay, so can I volunteer to use the armor? Um, as much as I would love to say yes, it's only been authorized for either my use, Cynthia's use, or Chief's use. Yeah, sure, I just shrugs. Ah, was worth asking. Yeah. All right, um, enough, enough, um, questioning. We've got to, we've got to go. Chop, chop. Everyone is already, well, eight out of the ten squads are already in their positions. I'll show you to where you have to go, but after that, you're on your own. Sounds good. Roger that. Sir, yes, sir. Okay. If you would all come with me. As Zero leads you all out of the office, uh, Francesca looks over to you all, doesn't say anything in particular, but she is praying that this goes well and that y'all come out of this alive. Alright, I'll remove the maps. Just uh, this, and look at this. Alright. So, as, as you all are walking, he explains that are you all gonna take the same route you did before when you stopped the first gathering? And then from there, once you get to your destination, you are going to go west. And you're going to remain west until you see a very clear marker. Where are we entering from? We're entering from the bottom of the map. Right uh, here where I am? Uh, yes. Or on street level? Uh, street level. As you all are 
<clears throat> making your way along, you... Can we call off Clone Gashia in the corner? Say that again? Oh, I didn't even fucking see my other coin there. How do, how do I delete that? Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. And there's a Drava in the corner, too. Yeah, yeah, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, this... if, if there's two of me, we, we, we are guaranteed to succeed. <laughs> uh, Mel, can you place yourself and your fairy on the map? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, sir. Uh, icon 2. Uh, yeah, I have to like spawn two people at the same time. That's so cool, you, you, you can control two fucking units. I can also control Drava. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you, could, you could control Drava, I can't. All of you I should can, be like, able to see on. her. Ta -da. I don't know how to delete her. Oh no. <laughs> I think you click in backspace. Mm, let me see. I took care of it. Oh, never mind. Who did it? Alright. So, Zero escorts you as far. Henry? Yeah, I'll come back. I was just testing that because last time I was confused. Nothing what the uh, click in that backspace? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Zero escorts you as far as he said he would, and then he very quickly makes his way over to his own post to handle his side of the mission. And with that, he says, "Good luck. Be safe. Don't die." And just between you and me, make sure they fucking suffer. And with that, he leaves. Wow. Suffer, huh? Making people suffer is not exactly my strong suit, but I can promise him that I will eradicate them. Alright. So. Henry is good at making people suffer. If you all remember, or rather don't remember, how you got to your original mission location, you walked along the catwalk and went to the right, to the left of this area once the bouncer gave you your signal. Mm hmm. And uh, Drava, she speaks up. And she said, this is the first time I've been part of an organized assault team like this. Um, Yashua, didn't you say you were a soldier where you came from? Yup, but far larger scale than this. Right. This is just a city. I'm I'm far more used to uh planetary assaults. Pardon? Anywho, let's move on. Uh, instead of taking the long way around, Draver uses uh, the zip wire that she was so graciously given and zips right on along the catwalk and makes her way over to wait for the signal. <gasps> Excuse me. I follow her with the flight unit that I was given. Alright. Henry used the grappling. Uh, our new fairy asks her owner, uh, hey, so what exactly are we doing here? Um, uh, um, so you see, usually I just follow what people do and it ends up working out for me. So come hither, come hither. I mean, I don't know why I find that so funny. 
I, 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 I get that, I but like... I just follow along. I just follow along. I get that, but like, what... What, what did he mean by, by... Make them suffer? Are we going to go um, kill someone? Oh, oh, killing you... So like... It's not like, okay, it's not unjust. It's in. It's for good causes, cause like we're saving the world, which is very nice, right? Like you're you're a part of the good people, which is fantastic for you, by the way. So like, imagine you just like got attached to somebody that was quite shit, ah, crazy. Um, no, we're good people. Um, right now we're about to stop a cult of backstabbing, lying sluts, and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with me. So fear not. Fear not at all. You will, you will enjoy yourself. Watching Mel talk to a fairy, and Henry the fairy turns around back. and says, "If you guys don't hurry up, I'm gonna cook that emergency rations." Oh my god! I will cut you. <laughs> this fairy will help you later on, God. Oh my god! The Genshin reference. Uh, in response, the fairy says, "I'd very much rather you not cook me, but." To the rest of the party that isn't Mel, it sounds like absolute gibberish. It's like a beep 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 Uh... I think it wants to be cooked. <laughs> uh, she, she said she doesn't want that. Henry, just leave the fairy alone before I put a bullet in your kneecap. Okay, it'll come in handy when we're all starving. How is this little shit gonna feed us? No, I have you know, rations. Shit, you know. Why are you so hell bent on eating a fucking fairy? Look at it. How does that look good to eat? That mm -hmm, looks toxic to me. No offense. No. I mean, it's a fairy that will help us and heal us and do like hot girl shit, so. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the fairy. I know. I'm, I'm, I meant to say <laughs> no offense to the fairy. I'm t I'm talking for the fairy. He feels. All we hear is beep, 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 beep. <laughs> the fairy the is fairy. trying not to be on the verge of tears as you are very clearly discussing its potentiality of being eaten. Okay, 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 okay. I like I hold it close to me and I just start petting it. There, there. <laughs> Hold on. Do I have something here? Hmm. Here. Oh. Damn it. I thought... I'm sad. I thought I had a cookie on my character. <laughs> I was gonna give it a cookie. <laughs> I look at the fairy's name, and I'm like, listen, no one is gonna hurt you as long as I'm here, okay? Do you understand? Um. Uh... I know I just met you, but I will protect you like my life depends on it. Uh, and after hearing that, she smiles. And right after she smiles, a bouncer gives a signal. Telling you all, it's time to go. Alright, now commencing mission. Why does that wolf look very familiar? I mean, hyena thing. That's the bouncer. Remember we were we were here before? No, no, no. I mean, like in a cartoon, like very off D and D basis. Looks like it's from a cartoon that I used to oh. watch. All right. Not before anyone says anything at <laughs> all. Please place your tokens right here. Where the creepy hand is. Uh, I I couldn't find a a drone icon that I liked. So I use that as a as a placeholder. That was good. That was good. All right, so we're gonna stop that. All right, so. So are we spawning here at the alley, or we could be at the rooftops? Uh, on the rooftop. Okay, cool. We'll be in the corner of the rooftop. All right, so you all make it to the following area the drone uh scans all the over it acknowledges that you all are the people who are supposed 
to be here. And then it leaves. And so I will ask. First of all, I'm going to ask that one of you, I don't particularly care who, does a perception roll. Me. I'll do it. Wait, what if you don't have good perception? Y'all decide that amongst yourselves, but don't argue over it, please. Who has good perception? Mine's at 15. Mine, My, okay. Four. Mine's at 12. Okay, well, we, we know who then. Okay, then. Did we ask Drava how much hers is? <laughs> Wait, hold on, I can get that. Do -do 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 -do. Drava's perception... Oh, you <laughs> did it. Oh, perception's 13. Okay. All right. No, yeah, yeah, Yashua was better. All right, Yashua. So, amongst the enemies on the rooftops, you spot a couple of flying type enemies. You see um, a few enemies holding some kind of sharp object. But. That is the extent of what you can see, as you do not know if there is anything on the ground level. And you also manage to spot that they appear to be traveling in a pattern of sorts. Almost like a patrol route. Now. I'll let you all know now, this is a sneaking mission. You can choose to deal with the enemies in silence, or you can choose to get close and deal with them. And well, I don't have to explain what happens if you get caught. Okay. Okay, so I'll just roll my my little sexy stealth. Alright. Well that where in particular are you aiming to go? Granted, oh I also have to let you know. Um because you are on the rooftops If because you all don't know, if there are enemies on the ground, they have no idea you exist. Mmm. So, uh, again, I ask, where are you aiming to go? And if you wish to travel between rooftop to rooftop, you can either jump via acrobatics, you can use your zip wire, or you can get creative with it. Alright, uh, which rooftop are you aiming to move to? Put them. All right. So you move there. Uh, who would like to go next? Hmm. I'm more concerned over the shinobi looking guy over there and the two flight three. units. I whispered to Yashua, how about we grapple him towards us, like the alley fight? That's going to be loud. And besides, can't you see those two aerial units? If I still had optical camouflage on me, yeah, I would do that. But, you know, I didn't bring my arsenal when I was brought here. I'll figure something out. And I'm gonna... Like... I'm gonna grapple my way here. Actually, no, I don't have to. I have enough stats to just fucking jump. Where are you going? Across. Over here. Across. Okay. Alright, so you take a 
a bit of a leaping position and you kick right off the ground with your with those strong legs of yours you leap into the air and you clear the landing though so you do check your surroundings just in case something might have been nearby to which you find nothing Hmm. Though I am planning to murder this guy first. Okay. However, Henry gave me an idea of grappling him. Or instead of grappling him towards me, I could use the grapple, grapple around his neck, use my body weight down here. And just pull down and see if I could choke him to death while he's on the roof. Hmm. Okay. I hear you. Let's. I'll be out of sight too. Unless there's units on the floor there, then. That we haven't seen. That we haven't seen, yeah. Let's put that to the test. <laughs> Please roll. A 1d20. And I will roll my own 1d20. That's R, right? Yep. Okay. So. You are going to throw your uh, grappling hook around his neck, yes? Mm hmm. Alright, on my side, I rolled a 14, so this is going through. Oh, that's right, you bought a set of dice, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, that's what all the the, the clicking and the clacking has been on my desk for. Alright, now, so. roll strength. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright, so, you, you yank the poor bastard over to you, and then you say you're going to jump down to the ground level and try to choke him out? Well, depending on the momentum and the amount of strength, it, it will either choke him or snap his neck. Hmm. That all that depends on you. Roll athletics. Since it's a metal wire, I'm hoping for it to just simply remove his head from his body. Athletics? Uh huh. God, I'm getting high rolls today. Alright. Uh, that's a pass. So, action wise, let's say that you take a small leap straight up into the air and then you just so gently uh, jump off the ledge and because of the weight combined with how hard you pulled uh, his neck is no more so I will put an icon to mark that this one is dead and on the ground. Turn it sideways. Alright. That's one century down. Can I loot his body? Roll investigation. See if this guy has any intel or keys or items on him. Okay, you find a scrap of paper uh, saying that the flying type enemies uh, breathe fire and poison. Joy. You find 
600 gil. Ooh. And that shuriken that it's holding, you decide to keep it for yourself. Awesome. And if you want to throw it at something, this is the damage roll for that. I just heard you roll. <laughs> no, I, I, I put my dice on my phone. Oh, okay. Is it a one-time one time use, unless I pick it out of the dead body? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I'll that, hold was, on to this. that was Yashua's series of actions. Uh, Henry, what is it that you wish you would like to do, sir? Uh, I'll try and spawn to Yashua and say, do you want to get grabbed back up to the rooftops? Uh, do we still have our communicators on us? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool, because I'm going to relay information about the flyers to everyone in the party. Okay. Answer my question, buddy. <laughs> I'm fine. Worry about yourself. I'm just going to grapple you back up. Don't you dare. Okay, I grapple across. All right. Uh, everyone has heard your information about the flyers, and hopefully act accordingly. As for Drava, uh, she is going to walk over to the corner of the building that she is standing on, and she is going to... She is going to turn around and attempt to say a quick message to our new fairy companion to which she will say um it's kind of weird that you came here as we're about to do this big mission but um and it, since it seems like you belong to Mel uh, she, Can I interrupt the conversation? She, like, between them two? Uh, the only way you can is through your communicator, which your fairy does not have. Okay, well, hold on. I, I can hear Drava, though. Like, speaking. Uh, you're kind of far away from that, physically. She's not speaking on the chance. Yeah, she's, she's, okay. she's just talking to your fairy. I will fucking roll perception because I, I want to go like, oh my fucking god, fairy, why are you so far away? Like, isn't this bitch supposed to be floating around me? Uh, you, you, you have to order her as such, otherwise. Oh shit, I forgot. You're supposed to be controlling the fairy too, not just your character. Yeah. You just abandoned your fairy. No, 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 she'll come back. She'll come back. Okay, since I can, can I like telepathically speak to the fairy? Uh, not yet. Not Gook, I can teach it that. Okay, I, I start like, okay, I want to light my sword on fire and like signal for the fairy to- No, come. don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> this is a stealth operation, young lady, what are you doing? Okay, okay, I just like start whispering, fairy, fairy! No! So it can like come towards me. <laughs> Listen, they won't hear me. I'm gonna roll stealth. That's, <laughs> that's not a stealth roll. The fuck is oh, it? A, what the fuck is roll is that? Athletics? You're uh, such a klutz! If you are if you really wanna communicate to your fairy as far away as you are, roll Wisdom and Animal Handling. Where the fuck is wisdom? Oh. Alright. Okay. So, you do a little bit of frantic waving, but your fairy does notice you at the corner of her eye. And with your wisdom roll, whatever you were going to whisper, you do it quietly enough so that the other sentries don't hear you. And now you may say what you were trying to say. It's like, okay, okay, now it's like, 
Oh my god, haha, <laughs> I forgot to fucking take you with me, come here, bitch, and then she, like... Can she, like, flutter towards me when I say that? <laughs> um... Just stream. <laughs> yes, but... What Drava was in the process of saying was that uh, she may be a little blunt at times, but you'll be in good hands with her. And then she continues to what she was originally going to do, which was uh, move over to the rooftop where Henry was. But I keep forgetting I have to order it around. Uh oh. Alright. Can I save Drava? In any way? Uh. As you're jumping across to me? Yes, actually. Do a strength save because she's midair. Oh my god. I have barely any strength. <laughs> okay, so you reach out to try and grab her. You just barely miss, and while she does manage to cling on to the ledge, uh, she kind of hit the side of the building a, a, a tad hard, to which she will lose 50 HP. Oh my god. I can mend her back up, don't worry. Did I hear the bong from where I am? Uh, yes. I check in the radio, what was that noise? And she responds, uh, uh, <clears throat> That was me, I... I'm not very good at this... Manual... Roof hopping thing. Don't worry, I'm fine, just my stomach and my chest hurt. And I cast Cure, because we need everybody at peak performance. Um. Sure. Wait. Sure. Okay. okay. Riku, I have to teach the fucking fairy how to use Cure, right? Uh, you can if you choose to do so. When? Uh, whenever you want. Like now? Though that is going to take time. Uh, oh. Yeah, so... The same way for... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, the same way that you learn, like, spells and stuff, it's the same way that you teach them to Selene. So if you want her to know Cure, that's a, a 1d10 roll. 1d10 minutes, anyway. Can other people teach the fairy things? Nope. Hmm. Oh. Okay, hold on. Alright. The only thing I'm worried about is that hooded creature thing on the map. It is going to take you three minutes to Which teach one? Selene the cure spell. Uh, between the two Lovely. goblins with maces on the rooftop. This thing? Yeah, that thing. Wait, mm. do I do it now? I see. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that process is currently taking place. Okay, great. I guess you're gonna like roll cure, so it's just me in the background like using the spell so she knows what it does. Okay. Uh, I'm just having my side combo with her, don't worry. Yashua, it is your time to act again. Alright. I radio into uh, Drava and I ask her a question. How good is your anti-air? And in response, she says, what the hell does that mean? How good are you taking out aerial enemies? Oh. Um... As long as they aren't moving too fast, I can pick them off, though that ultimately relies on what spell I use. We're both mages, we could double team that spell. 
Hey. We're gonna need to take all those two aerial units at the same time. So, so we're room. gonna have to do it quietly. Okay, I know a couple of soundless spells. Henry, quietly. I don't need you fucking turning them into confetti. Well, you don't want the bodies falling either, Henry replies. You could disintegrate them if need be. I think that's the best option. And Just nothing flashy. Drava asks you, do you know the ruin spell? Yes. Okay. Henry replies. I think us using that in unison would be our best bet. Because if we used anything elemental wise, that would make some noise. Yeah. And Ruin just. Um. I'm not really sure if you know the inner workings of it, but Ruin just disintegrates whatever it defeats if it's small enough. And that looks small enough. Good. In that case, I'll leave you two to those two flyers. As for me. There's someone I want to pay a visit to. I'm gonna target this guy, since he's out by himself. Though... So, okay. I don't know if there are enemies around the area here. Around here. Mm. I'm like hiding behind the wall. You can do... Uh, perception to see if anything out of the ordinary stands out to you. Okay. Mm, you look around, and as far as you can tell, the area is clear. Cool, I'm just gonna like somersault over here. Alright. Uh. As you do that, please roll stealth. Stealth! Oh, perfect. Yes! I'm okay. invisible! Alright, so you made absolutely zero noise, and up until your next action, you are invisible. So, <laughs> are you here in the comments cloaked engaged? <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it's not my turn anymore since I moved, right? Yeah. Smell. No. Uh, three minutes have gone by, and you have taught your fairy the cure spell. Woohoo! Perfect. Alright, so what you want to do, where you want to go? Hmm. I want to go here. Or here, actually, so I can attack this man's. You want to do what? Uh, I want to go here so I can attack him. This other guy on the roof. That is not on the roof? Mother. Oh my. Well, I, I don't know. Suffer and sadness. Okay, I'm gonna go here then. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> stealth, hello? No, <laughs> not yet. The meaning of stealth? Not yet. I'm just saying that I want to. I need to go, like, because it's just like basically I tell Riku where I'm going, then I go back, then I do the then go thing. I swear. <laughs> okay. Give me Riku. Um, it Give me, give me a sec while I punch in Celine's uh, cure sure. parameters. Okay. I was gonna ask, like, is this enemy on the roof or is he on the on the ground, street level? Uh, that enemy is on the ground. Okay, mm. perfect. Uh, if you kill this guy, no one's gonna notice. On the roof. Uh, this guy's on the roof, but this guy is on the street level. Yeah, yeah. But there's she a jumps onto there? Yes, there's a person there. I did not see that. That's reason. 
<laughs> she was going to jump on the roof. <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Listen, it's black. I mean, mm. wow. It's very out of context. That could be <laughs> misinterpreted. <laughs> Listen, it's only misinterpreted if you're racist. Clearly, we are. Oh well. Remember, you're hanging out with people with the best sense of humor. Hmm. He's so stealthy, you can't even see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this guy has better stealth games than me. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll make him bigger. I'm so done. <laughs> now we can see his eyeballs. <laughs> Okay, so where Yay. exactly are you aiming to move? Okay, well, now that I know <laughs> that there's a fucking enemy over there, I want to go, like, here. With Sidian. Come hither. <laughs> oh, leaving her behind, like, last time. That'd be great. <laughs> Alright. Uh... So you move over to the corner, I'm assuming, and in your eyesight, because uh, for, for clarity's sake, this thing has its back turned to you, but in your eyesight, it's right in front of you, unaware of your existence. Lovely. Can I attack it? Yeah, if you want to. Okay. Um, is it is it a mist-like creature? Uh, as far as you can tell, it is a skull wrapped up in a cloth. Hmm. I'm gonna cast thunder on my sword, and then use dragon slice. Oh, five that's ten. gonna make noise. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. Will it make noise? Well. The spell blade ability itself doesn't make noise as for as because description action wise the user is using their free hand to drag insert element here across their weapon. Now okay. if they were now if they were doing some like thunder from the heavens type shit that would have made noise. Okay. But because she said she's placing thunder on her weapon no noise. Oh, okay, so it's like dark souls you just Static paper. Got it. Alright. So it that's fucking sucks that one of them is a null, but 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 the but Well it's it's not null, it's just half damage. Because anytime you get a nat one on an attack roll, uh whatever damage it was going to be, cut in half. Mm. Okay, wait, hold on, I also need to oh shit, I messed up. Six. Nine. Two. Okay. So that means if I use the thing again, bless you. If I do the thing again, then it will be six. Alright, so. Womp. Then that. Then. That. I think that's enough, right? Hang on, so still adding things together. So it's one, two, three, four, and I used thunder? Yeah, okay. I used five moves. Alright, not to sell. Poker. No Yo. good stealth. What do you mean, no good stealth? <laughs> Yo. I cast thunder and I sliced the man's up. Whoop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the mistakes you almost make three times. <laughs> don't worry, don't okay. worry, don't worry. So, don't worry, to that me. creature, you did almost 700 damage and because it was blindsided and you struck it without it knowing you were there uh you took i mean it took a little bit extra damage and it is as far as you can tell uh hunched over in pain oh dear but it is still alive 
Does the fairy have a turn? Uh, the fairy does not know any combat attacks. Oh, I'll teach it shit. soon. I'm gonna teach it fucking dragon slice. I'm gonna give it like a tiny katana. That didn't it mean just, it doesn't have a turn though. Oh. Cool. Teach I'll... it solar beam. Oh, I can teach it solar beam. I have something called like prism beam. Uh, that you can only use when you are holding that weapon. Fuck. Can I give it like I wanna? Okay. Can I give it a weapon? Uh, you can. Do I have a weapon on me? You have plenty of weapons on you. Oh yeah. Can it hold my weapons? Uh, hand it a weapon and find out. I okay. Hold on. What do I feel like it's gonna do? Fairy dust and it's gonna shrink the weapon. Oh my god. get crushed by the weapon. Okay, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give them. Isn't my platinum blades? My platinum sword. I'm not using it anymore, right? What do I have equipped on me? Uh, the weapon. I have my prism. Oh, I have my prism katana right now. You have your uh, your typical weapons equipped. You have weapons you bought from Zero equipped because you're in your inventory, but you have not used your um your platinum weapons in quite some time. Okay, so I'm gonna give um, my fairy the platinum blades. Right. Oh, hold on, I'm just like, fairy, dearest, have this, and then I just give it to you. And the moment the fairy touches the weapons, they shrink in size and weight to where she can hold them. Bro, I'm gonna make this fairy fucking busted. I, I'm gonna teach her to move. In the middle of combat? Yeah, and? That's okay. Don't worry about it. Do -do 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 -do. I'm gonna teach it dragon stuffs, because it's a very quick and easy move. Unless I get unlucky. Oh! <laughs> okay. I got unlucky. So, within the span of three seconds, uh, you teach it dragon slice. It understands and it cannot uh -huh. use the attack. Uh -huh. now, we run it. We I, run it. I need a moment to punch that in. Uh, roll for Celine two times. Um, I mean, Dragon Slice? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to say Celine, but you know what I mean. I don't know how I can do that. Just do it to from To be your... fair, because she doesn't have it. Okay. Just do it from your page. Wapa, wapa. All right, this enemy is dead. <laughs> I'm and gonna make a fucking serial killer fairy. The reason that I said that 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 that, that didn't mean that Celine didn't have a turn, uh, that enemy was an undead type. If you remember, healing spells harm the undead. Oh yeah, should have fucking cast cure on my shit. Well, that that, that was me him. saying that you could. Tell, tell your fairy to be like, hey, cast cure on that thing. But cast cure on this bitch. But regardless, uh, it's dead, and now we will continue. Henry, what is oh, it that you wish me. to do next? Ruin with Drava, the two flyers. Are you hitting them separately at the same time, or are you hitting one of them at the same time? Uh... Like, doing all the attacks at the same time? Uh, yes. I have the dual casting, right? Right now? Uh, no you do not. Okay. I have to do... Uh, you said they're weak, right? So I'll cast... Did I say what? I cast it. Okay. But what, what, so... Are you aiming to have Drava attack one of them? With yeah. you? At, okay. With me. Yeah. Alright. Uh, which one, though? I'll take the further away one. And she'll take the closer one to her. 
All right. Oh, these two. Uh, please roll uh, persuasion to convey this plan of yours to her. You convey your plan, and she hears you loud and clear. So she... Let's, where does she get? Right here. So she lets off a quick set of ruin spells. One, two, oh my god, that's a crit. So she did five and I have to do five? Yep. What disintegration it is. Right. The flyer enemies are both dead. I radio in to both Henry and Drayvon, praising them. Excellent work, you two. Thanks. I I had a feeling I was gonna go well. My turn, yes? Uh, yeah. And I'm still cloaked, right? Up until the end of this turn. Cool. Gonna move behind this wall. Roll perception, see if there's any anything in the alley over here. Have to worry about. Well, I know that this guy's here, but does Yashua know that? Let's roll perception and find out. All right, uh, Yashua sees the flame humanoid enemy in clear sight. I radio in to let them know that there's a human torch over there. <laughs> oh God. All right. All right, so I'm gonna move back here and climb, climb up the wall behind this unit and just strangle him or just snap his neck, whatever. That's going to he be does. a strength roll. All right, he doesn't see me coming. Since I'm cloaked. I'm gonna use the Tifa class for this, just... You know, that strength save, uh, strength save. Okay. Uh... So you say you want to strangle him? Nah, I'm gonna snap his neck. Okay, snap. snap. Oh, that took a turn. Uh, let's see here. All right, successful. Successful? Yep. All right. All right, so that's another dead one. Let me just move over here so I don't accidentally delete you. Okay. Uh, if there is nothing else that you wish to do, your invisibility is going to end. Okay. Uh, before my invisibility ends, I want to move over here. With acrobatics. Uh, alright. Do I? Okay, cool. Okay. Um. No, no, never mind, never mind. Alright, so you leap over to the other building. Mm hmm. You stick the lamp. I'm hiding. I'm hiding behind this, so this guy doesn't see me. Alright. So you do all that, and your invisibility is now over. Alter. 
right, Mel? What is it you Hello. wish to do now? Um... I wanna, like, kamikaze over here. This Excuse me? This what? <laughs> you can't just say that! <laughs> What's wrong with what I said? So, what, you're gonna self-destruct? No. It is a form of it's a form of speech. A form of speech. No, a form of speech. Are you guys assuming that I want to grow up because I'm Arab? That's kind of racist. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> oh my god. So <laughs> you're taking it a step too far. So you are aiming to move to the other goblin scout, yes? Yes, sir. I will roll my <laughs> voodoo shit. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, poker. And the fairy is coming with me again. I'm not forgetting it. Okay, so... So you move. Yes. And... While you jumping over and landing didn't make any noise in particular, you landed in a way to where he can see you out the corner of his eye. What a little and bitch. he is mid-process in drawing an arrow. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Better I'm gonna fucking him, blink and cut his ass. Virgil. I'm gonna fucking blink and cut his bitch ass. Because when I use blink and cut, it's basically like I'm just like zoop zoop, so he can't fucking see. I mean, he can see me, but I'm just like up in his face. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll use blink and cut. Then, Dragon Slice, because I need to Dragon Slice, so I can get my last attack and boom, now I'm sexy and I do damage. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Then I'm gonna Prism Katana three times. Alright, uh, you have successfully killed the scout before it could even finish drawing its arrow. And in response, uh, your fairy says, Wow, that was... Fast? Uh... How long have you been doing this? Um... Very. That's all I can- I mean... That's yeah. not really an answer, but okay. I, I mean, like a few weeks, a month, two months or so. Uh, you all have been adventuring for approximately, time-wise, approximately two and a half months. Okay, two and a half months to be exact, because somebody whispered in my ear and told me that as of currently. <laughs> God reminds you how long you've been in another dimension. <laughs> I'm not keeping track. I don't, with the amount of shit's happening, it feels like it's been fucking years. Sure, you could blame time dilation. <laughs> it's jet lag, guys. Sorry. Jet lag. <laughs> jet lag, okay. <laughs> uh, Mel, can you look at your sheet real fast and tell me your attack stat? Um. You mean the number? Yeah. Uh, 73. So, well, with the dragon slice or without? Without. Uh, 692. Jesus, you have a lot of attack. Okay, um... So, Celine... Damn, I keep saying Celine. Your fairy takes you at your word. And... She just nods as she... Uh, holds her weapon in anticipation for another... Uh, enemy of sorts that... May or may not make the mistake of showing its face. Oh. So, I mean, since the since the person is dead, can I ask her if the name yet? Sure. Okay, I look towards it. So, did you pick out the name yet? Um, 
I don't know. Uh, uh, and a, a, as she is thinking, you can see uh, her fairy dust grow a little bit brighter for an unexplicable reason. And when it's at its peak, she says the name Allura. Oh, that's cute. I saw that in character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay then, Alora. Welcome to the team. Thanks. Go smell talking to her pixie again. No. <laughs> I do not need to be judged. Well, you can't hear her. Since you're on another building. Fucking voodoo ears. Alright, that is the end of your turn. Uh, Henry, what is it that you wish to do? Oh. I want to see if there's anything below us in the building. Like any on the low route nearby. Mm -hmm. I could hop down from here. Uh. So in the area below where you are, nothing really particularly stands out to you, but you do see a piece of paper on the ground. Wait, it's <laughs> Like, what general area is it? Can you ping it? Mmm, about, about right here. So I'll hop down and inspect that piece of paper. Don't break your toes on the landing. So I need to do acrobatics? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna break my legs. <laughs> oh yeah! my god! Oh my god. I have a one acrobatic point, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, because of your scuffed landing, Let's you see. lose 60 HP. Did we hear that? That crash? Uh, you didn't. Drava did. Okay. As she just, like, Peers over the ledge, and she asks you to communicate her. Uh, you okay? That sounded like it hurt. It did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to check out the piece of paper. Though. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. Um, you I need a Libra skull. Come on. <laughs> you look at the piece of paper, and it has clear-cut directions to a location that you are already heading to. I would have laughed if Riku trolled us and said it was a it was a piece of paper that was advertising free car insurance. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But, uh... Alright, is there anything else you want to do? Let's see... Uh... Can I make it up to here? With the grappling? Uh, with the grappling hook? Yeah. Gonna need a... Uh, that's quite a ways away, so I'm gonna need a... A pretty solid roll from you. Roll strength. Ooh. That is a strength save. Oh, strength. This 
Alright, so you shoot your grappling hook over and uh, it lodges in there. It's a little bit of a, a sloppy airborne travel, but you do make it over there. Henry just sits down. His feet hurt. Okay. And as for Andreva's turn, <clears throat> she is going to continue traversing the rooftops. And hopefully, she won't hurt herself this time. Oh! She made it. Alright, so she rolled a, a nat 20 and she moved... Let, let's just say that... Uh, she moved double the distance that she was originally going to. So she is... As she leaps across the air... Uh, she looks over to... Mel and the fairy, because Drava does not know her name, she looks over, waves midair, and lands right next to Yashua. And then she is going to circle around him just a bit and set her eyes on the, as Yashua called it, human torch. And she asked, uh, do you want me to take care of that thing over there? Well, if you could, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, extinguish him without making any noise and be my guest. Uh, I've got, I've got, I've got something for that. No, no problem. No problem. And she... <clears throat> She takes her staff off of her back, and she fires off a couple of blizzard spells at it. And once they smash into it one after another after another, uh, what used to be flames is just a, a literal walking piece of charcoal. To which she kinda takes pity on it and then just handles it with the ruin spell. I walk I kinda walk over to the ledges to just to observe the havoc she caused it. Right. That enemy... Not the most pleasant ways to go. That is but another will do. dead enemy. All right, so I will now say that because of how successful this has all been, minus the few scuffed rolls we had, uh, you all have taken care of enough enemies and cleared enough ground to where you can choose to move to the next area if you want to. Kill the rest. Let's mop up the rest. Uh, I wish I had dual casting. I would just do two giant pillars of stone and drop them. <laughs> that would have been funny. So my turn, yes? Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna leap over here. Do another acrobatics roll. Oh, no, those are my items. All right, you make it over. Cool. Okay, so I look down. Do I have to roll to see this guy? Because he's right in front of me. If, if I just look down. Nah, he's he's right in front of you under a source of light, so you don't have to roll anything to see him. Okay. So I'm gonna. Assault this dude. Like, body check it against the wall. Hopefully, it gets to rupture his organs. Mm, okay. How do you want to do that? By running back over here. Kind of 
charging up. <laughs> and just sprint, leap, and Grapple. literally drop kicking directly at his chest against the wall. All right, I'm gonna need another acrobatics roll, uh, a dexterity roll, and a strength roll. I want you a whiff, so he just starts pounding on you on the floor. <laughs> That'll be funny, yeah. So, ac acrobatics, strength, dexterity, and what else? Nope, that was it. That's a pass. Alright, so, you back up quite a bit. You run. And then you jump, and then through a an interesting spectacle of aerial twists, you drop kick the bastard right into the wall, and you also stick the landing. And uh, I'm not going to say that he's dead. But because he was so severely caught off guard, man's hurting pretty bad. That's Mel's turn. Was that my whole turn? Yeah. Oh, because I just wanted to stomp on his head soon after. You moved twice. Yeah. Well, it, it made enough noise to where you're... you're <clears throat> Your comrades heard that, so they can do whatever if they want to. Uh, but yes, it is now Mel's turn. I'm just dusting myself off. Is there anyone else left? Oh, wait, there is. Over here. Can I? I'm gonna. Can I send Celine to like finish off the person next to Joshua? Uh, yeah. Because you, I... you can tell Selene to be like, Hey, go grab this, or hey, go look at that, or hey, go be nosy and eavesdrop and all that stuff. You you mm -hmm. can tell Selene to do a lot of shit. Okay, so I'm going to tell Selene to go and basically just drag and slice the motherfucker up. Okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> just send it to slit its throat. Want it to whip and just hit No <laughs> 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 Does it kill it? Does it like? Can you tell me if it kills it so I don't need to use it twice? Because she uh, only has two moves for barrel. She hit it, but it's still barely breathing. Well, okay, I'll use it again. Also, Rico, whenever I try to roll the move, it says like advanced advantage. Oh, uh, I forgot to. I forgot to, to do the oh thing. Oh my god! No, no, no! Oh, wait, wait! Right. No, no, no! No. That's not how that works, and I would very kindly ask you to stop trying to make that happen. But anyway, um, yeah, I forgot to switch toggle with all that on, so re-roll that, because that, that wasn't supposed to be rolled the way it was. Oh, okay. Okay, now the thing is dead via Allura, um, slicing its neck open. Oh, oh, damn bitch. I said that in character, I just said, damn bitch. Good job, Alora! Yeah, and she, okay. she turns to you and she says, Yeah, you didn't really say how to do it, you just said swing, and so I did. I mean, she honestly, perfect. <laughs> and then she, okay. she flies back over to you. Now, because you told Alora to do something, being attacked, uh, that used one of your actions and both of her combat actions. Okay, sounds sounds decent to me. I want to go and attack this man's here. Uh, you gotta. You, you don't you gotta roll to move that far. Yep, 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 yep. Wait, I need to roll something to move that. Okay, stealth and acrobatics. Um. Right. Whoopa! Okay, um... So, you make it with the acrobatics roll. 
but when you land, uh, the stealth you you were you missed the stealth roll by one. Mm. So when you land, uh, you and the enemy make eye contact. <laughs> okay. Oh no! It looks like the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's go with that. They're just right, pointing gonna... fingers at each other. Dude, I'm gonna present Katana this motherfucker to the ground. Hold on. Womp, womp, womp. Okay. And... Again, due to the... Surprise... Of what you did... It does not have enough time to react... And amidst all your attacking... It is dead. Woohoo! Okay. So, all of the enemies have been taken out. Your stealth mission has been completed through and through without being spotted, by the way. Good, good, good on y'all. And by spotted, I mean spotted in a manner that any of the living enemies raise an alarm. And, uh... Please give yourselves 500 EXP. Da -da -da -dum, bum, 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 ba -dum. All right, I need to add Gil. Forgot I Do looted a body. EXP for subclass two. Say that again. For the people who have subclasses, it would be two fifty for their subclass. Yeah. How much EXP? Uh, 500 for your main, 250 for your sub. Ooh, I, I don't even know where to add XP onto my sub. Um, I'm gonna put it in my ideals. Yeah, I'll just write it down for now. You can type it where, where your uh, alignment thing is. Okay. Alright, are we all good? Yep. Alright. So Drava jumps down and convenes over where over to where by Yashua is. And she speaks in the communicators. Well, with everything done and out of the way for that part, uh We're not too far off from where our destination happens to be. All right. Let's rendezvous over here. Okay. And let's move on. Uh, the rest of y'all coming? As I wait for, as I wait for the others to catch up. So you all gather up with each other, you take a quick look at your map, and your destination happens to be uh, right across the street. And on the outside, it looks like your average nightclub. But um, you see that on the front, it says closed for the night. Nightclub's closed. You guys, you guys feel like uh, breaking in? Yes. I don't mind. How exactly do you plan on breaking in, though? You want to take the bold and brash approach and have Henry and I or I blow the door open, or do you want to go in from above and put a hole in the roof? As you can see, a very blatantly obvious 
devilish grin creep upon her face. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, but... I think I'm gonna enter from the rooftops. Work my way down. Though, if... If you want to be loud and proud, I'm not going to stop you. Okay. I think I'll take the... The quick route. The, the stealthy route. Okay, so you want to tag along with me then? Yeah. Okay, right. let's go. What about you, Henry? Actually, nah, never mind. You don't have a choice. Well, I don't have a choice because we're because now we're doing uh, two two teams. Yeah, I'm loud and proud, no matter what, either way. Yep. All right. So, uh, Yashua, Mel, and Alora, they take to the rooftops of the club, and Henry and Drava. They stroll right up to the front door, and you can use whatever spell of your desire to blow the door open. Fire four. <laughs> Fire four. No, okay. No, I'll do. Alright, so, you two blow the door wide open, and you just stroll on inside. Let me move this up here. Uh, please place your tokens right here. Well, Henry placed your token here. And I will move Drava's right here. Okay, so since we're coming in from the ceiling, our tokens are located where? Uh, actually, I was going to say that you two are not inside of the building yet. Okay, cool. Alright, so... You open the door, you walk inside, and you see someone who appears to be a woman holding her weapon in her hand as if she was anticipating your arrival. You also see several other enemies, and you see two of them standing alongside a portal with a magic circle under their feet. And the woman speaks. Ah, well then. It took you all long enough to arrive. Seeing as the man who thought he was going to be a double agent of sorts tried to set you all up for failure. I'll be blunt. Well, none of us particularly asked for him to do that. Uh, there was no denying the fact that his entire purpose was to sabotage you all so he could take the glory for himself. But, seeing as he's very clearly not here right now, that information is now deemed entirely irrelevant. Now, I'd rather we skip the formalities and I do my job as a captain of the cult that I have devoted my life to to serve because I very strongly believe in our leader's goal to bring about salvation through the manipulation of the dead. She stands to her feet. She kicks the chair in both of yours directions and 
her weapon that she's holding on the surface level has no reason being as large as it is. But she's just gripping it and swinging around really nearly with one arm. Her armor is that of almost jet black metal plating. The shoulders in particular stand out to you as one of them appears to have tassels on it and what appears to be a feather. And the other one is a metallic wing of sorts. And she very slowly begins to approach Dreva and Henry. And Dreva, she, as, as the uh, new adversary, approaches you very slowly. She speaks up and she says, Why do you feel that it's necessary to, quote-unquote, save people through manipulation? I don't understand the purpose of that thought process. And Henry, if you have something you want to say, you may say it. Hmm. Can I just attack? Yes, you may just attack. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. I want to burn this lady. Is it just one attack, or can I do multiple? One. She... And burn. ...watches the fireball fly in her direction. And just as it is about to strike her, she swats it away, and it instead hits this enemy over here. Does it burn? No. Because one, I wasn't done saying what I had to say. But she swats it away. And seemingly when her weapon made contact with the ball of fire, it immediately shrunk in size. And it stopped being as hot as it was when it came out of your staff. Well, it seems that... You have the exact same mindset that I do. Fight, kill you, and then continue on with my mission. And Dreva says, well, guys, she's saying in our communicator, uh, the action started. Oh, uh, I reply, we're on our way. Okay, well, up until they enter the building, uh, Dreva will be going first, since he's a lot faster than Henry. And she is going to open up with Casting Arrow Barrage Aeroga Ruin and Siphon. And that not one on Ruin is incredibly unfortunate. Okay. She only has four actions. Uh, I'm I'm not done with her yet. Uh, 
So the thing in front of us are staircases up, right? You mean behind you? No, no, this one right here. This area right here. Oh this no, that's up. that's kind of like a like a bar. Okay. But they're on like a higher platform area up here. Uh from where you're standing it is the bar area and your adversary is below you. Okay, Drava has dealt 692 damage to the enemy. The lady? Yes. Alright, Henry, it's your turn now. None of your fire spells have set her on fire. I mean, have her burning. We add. How many do I have to hit to make her burn? Uh, whatever I roll on my side, being her uh, charisma, I mean her debuff resistance. That's that's what you got to beat. So I gotta re-add again because I lost my place. Alright, your damage comes out to 608. Alright, now with your turn ending, the enemy is going to uh, cut her way through the bar and She's going to walk over to Drava, and she says, uh, Since your friend decided he wants to begin the fight first instead of you, let's start the carnage with you. So we're gonna do... action she is going to turn to Henry she's going to look at him and then she's going to be behind him as she strikes and moves at the same time and for her last action you know take a step back and now, while Drava was 
being attacked. She, as best as she could, tried to throw throw up a guard as she was being hit to which she blocked one of the attacks but didn't entire ne entirely negate a whole lot of damage as she uh, laughs in Henry's and Drava's face and says is this the best opposition they have to stop us oh this is pathetic Pathetic. And Jeva, she speaks to her communicators. Um, guys, she hits really hard she has a really menacing weapon and if you would so kindly decide to you know uh, join the fray that would be ideal right about now as so when do we drop in uh whenever you want to because it is it is your turn now uh, mel had to step away to go to the bathroom but Drava has taken uh, 1,460 right HP of damage. So, where do I come in from? Anywhere? Uh, anywhere, since you're on the roof. Alright, so... I'm just gonna bust through the roof and just land behind her. Alright. Now, because you are behind her, uh, and she isn't entirely aware you're there yet, since she's focusing on your comrades, uh, you will be dealing uh, bonus damage with your attacks this turn. Hold on. I'm trying to find the. the right skill to use. Uh, welcome back, uh, Mel. Okay. It is currently Yashua's turn, and he has broken through the rooftop. And you can see how much damage Draven has taken already. So I'm attacking her from behind. I'm gonna do. Okay, so it says here I could use this five times per action. Though it's gonna deplete my fucking ammo. Yep. My ammo count is at zero. Get ready to do some math, Riku. <laughs> I'm already adding your damage up. And let's get all my ammo back. Alright. One. Two. Uh, 
All right. And last attack will be. One, two. Ooh, that was a bad roll. So, how many reloading seconds did I do? All right, with all of those attacks, and because of the bonus damage from striking her from behind, oh, she wasn't aware, you have dealt 2,531 damage. To which, uh, after being struck in such a manner, she very angrily uh, turns around and says, Well, 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 look here, another goddamn insect. Hello getting, there. Getting, getting in the way of what I, what we are trying to do. Ah, uh, don't get mad. It's just part of my job. Uh, well, me being here is part of my job as well. That's part of my very goddamn existence. But that's oh, well, neither we have that here nor there. As her grip on her weapon tightens, and where her hand is, it is beginning to glow. Uh, Mel, it is your turn. Am I still on the like opening of the roof, or am I like? On the floor. You are still on the opening because you did not announce you were coming down with Yashua. Okay. So I'm gonna jump down, but like in style. Okay. In style. Yes. I'm gonna fucking flip and then like set my sword on fire and write the words fuck you bitches and just like land down Spider Man. So I'm joking. Um. I'm just gonna jump down and like maybe like have a nice flip and then like land properly. Okay, where are you aiming to land? I wanna fight the bitch. Wait, which, which, which? I wanna fight this, like, Karthus looking ass person here. Ba -da -da -bum -bum -bum. Okay, well, that is your main enemy here. Mmm, so we should probably focus on the sides before the main. I mean, you can do I'm gonna you go want. where Yashua is. Okay. Mm. It's okay, one at, one at a time, one at a time. Okay. Alora. Uh, I say that's in character, I just say Alora and then she like flies towards me. Alright. I feel like it's more fitting for her. And when she comes down to where you are, she looks around at all the other enemies present and her eyes are almost as large as dinner plates as her facial expression is saying that. <clears throat> um. She would really like an explanation as to what's going on, and it also reads that she's kind of scared. Okay. Um. I'm gonna explain. Okay, so I look at Alora. Alora. Um. Okay, Alora. So basically, right now we have reached the location of the cult ritual area and now we need to kill all of these fuckers so we can go back home and have a very beautiful nice feast and also fear not because you are by my side so if you're ever worried or scared just hide un hide behind my hair okay uh, okay 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 Great. It's just basically a signal, like if you're ever scared, just waddle in there. Mm -hmm. And in response, <clears throat> uh, the enemy that you are fighting is going to roll Yeah, well, while you sit there and stand, and stand there and talk to whoever 
it's good that you acknowledge that you should be fearing me right now. I'm gonna roll intimidation back. Because this host that, speaking too much. That would be a charisma save, not intimidation. If Got you, it. If you pass that, then you can roll. Just my D20. Why does this happen to me? <laughs> Alright, you pass the save. Now you Lovely. can roll intimidation. Oopsie. I rolled. I opened the table's tree. Whoop. Okay. The thing is, I don't know what the number is yet. Woo! <laughs> oh, ooh! That's quite nice. What is it that you wish to say? I'm gonna say, first of all, bitch. You should fear us. Second of all, don't have so much attitude when I just got here, god. I'm tired. And she says, I have no reason to be fearing you. Because regardless of what you do, our job, or rather, my job, is going to be done, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. This sounds like an anime. I said that like out loud, like in character. Damn, this sounds like an anime. <laughs> Anyway, so you're done, or like, you want to fight? Do you have like more monologues? Oh my God, a poker! <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say anything in response, but because she feels that you are mocking her, uh, she goes a little bit angry, and. The singular purple strand of hair on her head is beginning to glow. Oh my god, it's an e-girl. <laughs> okay, can oh. I fight her now? If you want to, yeah. Okay, wait, first of all I want to use Libra because I want to see what kind of element is like weak to sword. Alright, click the Libra button. Uh, da 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 da. I need to find it. I forgot how to use it. <laughs> Rika. Oh. Uh, as I type this up, you all may comment on your surroundings if you wish. Well, if anything positive I could say about the enemy in front of me is that she she got the looks. I, I like the hairstyle and the highlight too. I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a shame I have to kill you though. <laughs> it's a shame I have to kill you. So your design is gorgeous. And in response to that, she says, Compliments will get you nowhere but killed faster. Oh, in my case, compliments will get you everywhere. Including Death's Door. Well, that's ultimately reliant on who gets there first. And rest assured, that's not going to be me. Yashua just shrugs. Oh well, she's... He's brave to tempt fate, at least. So, Mel, what's your uh, fairy's name? Did you give it a name yet? What's What's the what? Oh, the name of the fairy. Um, what fairy? What do you mean, what fairy? That's the enemy saying that. Ah, uh, don't worry, that doesn't concern you. You're not part of our group. Mind your business! If you wanna- if you wanna learn and join our team. Um... I- I- I turn towards Alora. I'm like, Alora, please introduce yourself. And you forget that we can't understand the fairy's language. Oh shit. 
Um. <laughs> all, all she, well, she her says, name is Alora. She says what you can understand, but everyone else is sound like beep. Hey, <laughs> me, ski. Um, it's like okay, so if if you guys are wondering what she said, because I forgot you guys don't understand her. Um, her name is Alora, and she says it's a pleasure to meet you guys. Oh, that's adorable. The pleasure is all mine, Alora. If you ever feel scared, you could always hide behind me as well. She responds by saying, Skip beep 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 beep. And that means I appreciate it. Can I try to understand no. No. her <laughs> language? No. Oh. I'll teach her Kay. English soon. Okay, so the thing is, we could talk to the fairy, but we cannot hear the reply. Because we don't understand. You can hear the reply, but you don't understand the reply. I was hoping that my nature would help. Nope. <laughs> Yasha is just standing there, examining the enemy. She does have a nice figure, though. Ew, are you trying to sexualize my fairy? No, the enemy in front of us. Oh, yeah, it's just her. <laughs> like, look at her. She's a 10. I mean, yeah, she's a beer. Bunny girls. Like, damn, look at those eyelashes. Uh, We're just trying to piss off this enemy at this point. And <laughs> shoddy, you free. <laughs> yeah, she's using fucking casts on us. Uh, she swings her weapon out in front of you all. And because she is. Let's see. Wait, Riku, it doesn't say which is weak to, which element. Yeah, you use normal Libra. Motherfucker, what do you mean normal? There's an extended version? There's an enhanced version, yes. Since when? Since Lion had it. <laughs> Since the I start of the it. campaign, you had to be a gunbreaker to have it. Oh. Well. Uh, Unfortunate. I'll find out what first friend. Yashua. Please yep. roll a 1d5 to dodge. That poor woman is getting sexualized when she's trying to beat us up. Ugh, she's society. trying to beat me up because I'm complimenting her. Oh my uh, god, I love- <gasps> Do you guys end up uh, fucking? 1d- Nah. 1d5? Yep. <laughs> you can fix her, you can change oh, her. Oh, that hit me straight in the face. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. uh, Mel, roll a Name. 1d73. Why 73? Because that's the difference between her speed and your speed. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's horrifying. Well, you just barely almost dodged that, so you're getting hit. Mm hmm. So how much damage am I taking? Uh, you are taking... Hold on. Uh, the first Tempest Wave is 507. So, uh, subtract your defense and your AC percentage from that, and that's the damage you take. What's my AC percentage supposed to be? Because it's always changing to fucking... God damn it. Um... Yep. I think last time... Before roll twenty fucked it, it was uh nine percent. Okay. And Mel your the Tempest Wave that was meant for you comes out to uh five twenty-four. So subtract the defense. And I think your AC was at eight percent. So my HP is minus the five twenty four. No, it's it's the 524, and then subtract your defense from the 524, and then whatever 8% of 524 is, subtract that again, and then that's the damage you take. Alright. Minus that by... <laughs> Does my defense go down by 184? No, you're losing 184 HP. Okay. Okay. 
And now, for her next three attacks, <coughs> or rather for her next Problem three actions, mean. she is going to enhance her weapon for six turns. All right. And then she is going to jump into the air. And that's going to be for Henry and Mel. What? Racist. How is that racist? Because I have a race, I have I have um, <sighs> less rights, so I try to use it as a way to get out of situations. Yeah, that's not happening. Also, such um, as now. Yeah, you do have a way out of it. Ooh, 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 ooh. I do. I have a move. I have a fucking move. Where is okay, it? Okay. Uh, uh, rewind a little bit, cause I had to find a fucking my cell phone to do the quick math here. How much damage am I taking here? Your Tempest Wave attack came out to 508, I believe, so that. Minus 220, and then 9% of that, and minus 26, you're taking 262 of damage. Okay. Riku, isn't there a move that I need to do? Like, if I roll a 1d3, something happens? Uh, you should keep track of that because I sure am looking Oh, slap right shot! Slap shot. Is me? Oh, that was rude. Woo! What did you do so much? Riku, Riku. What? Oh, my bad. <laughs> Is it slap shot? Again, you should be keeping track of that, but yes, it is. Okay, I know, because I, I was like scrolling through and I couldn't find it and I got confused. Okay, rolling a 1d4. What the fuck did I do? Okay, never mind. 1d4. Allahu alam. Behold, true power. Okay. So. Fuck you, bitch. The damage that you would have taken is confirmed completely reflected back to the end well back to Yuzo since you now know her name and then bleed she's bleeding and your next attack is an automatic crit let's fucking go so her turn is over it is now uh, Yashua's turn since he is the fastest and as for the enemy the other enemies present in the room for whatever reason they're paying you absolutely no attention at all as they all seem to be working on whatever those strange portals are that are by them well I'm gonna go see what these guys are doing have fun uh, with your new friend Mel So there, Mr. Wizard, what you doing over here? He does not respond as he is hyper-focused on the portal in front of him. Can I tickle him to break him out of focus? Define tickle. Stabbing him with my two fingers where his armpits are, I just jab him hard. Um... Trust me, it's real painful if you do it to someone. I guess... Actually, not better yet. I'm gonna choke him from behind. Okay, roll strength. Okay, roll constitution save. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, you grab him, to which he then pays attention to you. And when he notices you, you physically feel that that man is ridiculously cold to the touch, and you immediately let go of him. Ooh. Jesus Christ, you're cold hearted than my you're more cold hearted than my ex. Unhand me, you Cretan! You will not stop our goal for today. What is your goal for today? Uh roll persuasion to see if he answers that. Not a good roll. Uh, yeah, that's what you think. So, you say that, and he stammers for a moment, and he's he doesn't give you an exact answer, but it's something along the lines of what the rest of us are here to do on this on this glorious, radiant day for our. And then he stops, and he raises his arms, his hands are emanating extreme cold, as he is now part of the battle. Well, yes, I do agree it's a glorious day. The weather is nice outside, too. So yeah, I agree with that, but it doesn't answer my question, what are you doing? And in response, he says nothing as he prepares an ice spell. Uh, what? Do I use his skill again? Uh, no. Huh? You said you. What are you saying? No to? Did you say you want to roll persuasion again or something? No, 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 I'm just asking to myself, how do I use this skill again? Oh. Uh... You know what? Y Yashua just shrugs and just... <laughs> Uppercuts him. <laughs> Alright. So you crack him across the chin one good time. I don't think that's going to do damage. Uh... Actually, fuck it. Oh, 69. Nice. But it's a bad roll. <laughs> Alright, let me back up. Um... Wait, how many rolls was that? One, two, three, four. Okay, last roll. Uh... I need some bullets back. All right. Also, what's this girl's health bar? Because I don't see it. Uh, I'll display that in just a moment. To the to the ice man, you have dealt one thousand five hundred and sixty two damage. And that is the end of your turn. Uh it is now Drava's turn. To which she will follow suit of what uh, Yashua is doing. Move over to the leftmost side of where she is. And to the assuming uh, young man that is 
interacting with his portal. She is going to fire off a ruin spell. Two of them, actually. And the first one knocks him off his feet. And then the second one hits him dead center in the chest. And that one is dead, but the portal still lingers. She then sets her sight on the on the shadow rat creature that you all have seen several times before. And she is going to use fire. Oh, that's not good. Uh, and then she's going to use arrow barrage. And then for her last action, she is going to cast Temper on, let's see, <clears throat> she is casting Temper on Mel. Alright, that's her turn. Henry, it is your turn again. Okay. Uh, sorry for a sec. I'm gonna be right back. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot my mic was muted. You're good. Okay, okay. I'm going to cast Cure on myself. Alright. Then I'm going to cast my limit break on her. Okay. How many different elements do you know? Again? No. Six. Says six. Does cure count as a separate one? Holy. Only when used on an undead. Only, oh, so it wouldn't count in this situation. Nope. Okay, so it would be only six. Alright, roll that. We're really gonna break five more times. So, five more times? Yep. Okay. Now, description wise, uh, what physical actions are you taking while you do this? I want to knock her sword out of her hand. No, I mean, like, what is your character doing? Oh, he's floating up, and he's just going to throw all the different elements at her. With his staff. Okay. I want to try and knock that weapon out of her hand, so they have a little bit easier time. Uh, okay, so if you want to try and knock a weapon out of hand, uh, you're gonna have to be aiming specifically for that the next time you attack. Okay. But she has a real tight grip on that damn thing, just so you know. I know. All right. So your damage came out to one thousand three hundred and twenty-five. That was and, only two actions, right? Yeah, and as she was being struck by each individual spell, she started to physically flinch after each one, 
but after the third one, she... <gasps> Excuse me. She rammed her sword into the ground, and is using that to um, maintain her balance. So I'm going to try to hit her hand now. So you are aiming for her hands, her yes? Yeah. Okay. With my last three attacks. Alright. And they're going to be multi-attacks because they're barrages, so let's do that. Alright. Let me just add this up. Okay, so, because how Arrow Barrage works, you did meet the minimum requirement to uh, disarm the enemy. So, for description's sake, um, you sent your small orbs of wind, specifically aimed at her hands, and she was too slow to react to try and deflect each and every one of them and of the ones that did hit her hands the <clears> hardest <throat> that caused her weapon to be flung to the other side of the room so her weapon is considered to be over here by the stage area And with that being said, uh, her turn is going to resume, but when she clenches her hand, a purple bolt of electricity shoots out of it. And while it looks like it should be hurting uh, Mel and Alora because they are as close as they are, it instead loops around and it harms Yuza herself. To which she shouts in sudden agony as when you saw the lightning itself, instead of it looking more like lightning, it looked like barbed wire magical barbed wire at that and the more she reaches out to it uh the longer it becomes but the more she screams in pain and it makes its way about halfway over until she drops her arm and when she next raises her head uh because mel you are close enough to physically see this happening one of her eyes is blue, while the other is purple. And that glow that she initially had begins to fade away just a bit. And you hear a voice that does not belong to her. It sounds like two people speaking at the same time, to which... Voice one says, give me my autonomy back. And voice two says, you will remain under my control as long as I say so. To which from there, if you have anything particularly you'd like to comment on, you may. But for uh, in the moment's sake... She is currently glowing purple as her glow has returned and it is not a friendly looking glow. Anything? Nothing at all? Nope. 
The only thing I would scream out would be like, Mel, get that sword. I mean, where'd the sword drop, though? Right behind you. You can get Celine to grab it. It's close by, too. It's not Celine, it's Alora. <laughs> Alora, Alora. <laughs> Alora, may you please grab me that sword? She nods in response, and as she flies over to try and pick it up, the moment she touches it, she is thrown back into you. Oh, shit. And hey, hold on. I want it. When Yuza finishes freaking out, uh, she stands to her uh, upright position, and you can very clearly tell that she is possessed. Oh. Can I try and grab the sword? You may. No. <clears throat> okay. I I grab the sword. Question mark. Uh, please roll Constitution save. Constitution save. Right. You manage to grip the sword, but as long as you are trying to lift it, uh, you will be losing 50 HP because it is electrocuting you. Oh yeah, sure, I don't mind. Can I cast thunder on myself <laughs> to be immune to it? I don't think it works like that. So I'm gonna... Nope, that's not how that works. Yeah, I assumed. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grip it then. It's mine. Okay. So you currently have the enemy's sword in your hands. Can I uncast the element from it? No. Okay. Can I cast something over it? No. Okay. Uh, again, as long as you are holding that sword, it will cause you pain. 50 HP's worth, and like all the time. As long as you, as long as it is in your hands, you will be taking damage. Hmm. I have enough 50 HP. <laughs> okay. okay. What do I do with it? Oh my god, it's a cute fucking sword. I want it. I want to snag it. Is it my turn, by any chance? Not... yet. Mm -hmm. Because it is... it was Henry's turn, but now it is Yuza's turn. And also, uh, move your token over here. They move it closer to the- yeah, there you go. Um... So with it being Yuza's turn, as I said, you can very clearly tell she is possessed. And she opens her hand. She aims her hand towards uh, Mel and Yashua. Oh. Okay. No. Two. Oh, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> Let me add that up. And as the small chunks of ice go flying towards you all, instead of them being their typical bluish white, they appear to be a whitish dark purple kind of color. And uh, again, uh, Yashua, please roll a 1d5 to dodge. And Mel, roll a 1d73. Yeah. 
Retaliation doesn't work on spells, right? Um, retaliation Let's see. works on ranged attacks. It does not trigger against melee or any magic spell of tier 3 or higher. And that sure does say Blizzard missiles being Blizzard 1. Okay. So, can I use retaliation or after dodging or what? Sure. Okay, uh, Mel, you dodge the attack. Slash uh, R 1d5, right? Yep. Alright, Yashua, you dodge the attack as well. Cool. Actually, I'll just dodge. Fuck it. So you're not using retaliation? Nah. I'm dodging them. <laughs> no point. Okay. So you dodge out of the way of that. And Yuza raises her other hand. And a tether of sorts. Same one that was causing her pain mere moments ago comes out of her hand and latches on to her weapon. Uh, Mel, please roll strength. Mm -hmm. Um, just straight up strength, okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, she pulls you five feet closer to her. Ooh, stop. I'm taken. No, no, right here. There you go. Yeah. And for the remainder of her turn, until she gets her weapon back, she is going to continually try to pull you, and therefore her weapon, back to her. And now, it is Yashua's turn again. You said that she's using a tether? Yes. Can you- is it possible to break the tether? Yes. Now, this is a ma magic tether, something physical, something I could put a bullet in and it snaps? A magic tether. So I have to use a magic bullet. Cool. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh... Oh god, we have people coming over. Jeez. Alright. Um, Alright, so what magic bullet should I use? Let's use... Let's use Ice 3. So I use the Ice 3 shot. Mm -hmm. uh, actually. Just... That's 3d9 plus your magic attack. Actually, I'm just going to use a hollow shot as a catalyst to send the bullet. Is that all right? Sure. All right, so you shoot that at the tether and it breaks. Uh, because of how strongly Yuza was pulling on it in her possessed state, uh, due to the recoil, she falls backwards and now has to take some time getting up. Hey, what now? Uh, let me use Libra on this guy quickly. Okay.
because I got to see which one's a bigger threat. guys no threat at all huh? okay Yashua just stares at him for like a brief second and just scoffs okay you're no threat to me no offense I say this in character mm -hmm. uh. you could uh, carry on with your chance I'll deal with you later uh, it for a moment, the Ice Priest appears to be offended, but it decides to leave you to your own devices as he is fully convinced that you're going to die, so it goes back to working on the portal. What's my limit break energy on? Uh, I haven't been keeping track of that. I have. I haven't used it, so it should be at 99. And the last couple of turns, it should be at 100. Uh, do you remember the changes I made to limb breaks? Uh, yes and no. You're gonna have to remind me. Uh, you now need a thousand limb break energy to do it. Ah. That part I didn't read. So how much limit break energy do we get per turn then? Uh, per turn, regardless if you do a damage or not, you get one point. When you deal damage and you take damage, you get 10% of that, round it down. Oh that's, oh, that's too difficult to keep track of. If I, if I scroll up and look at your rolls real fast... There's math... Because I haven't used Limit Break. You've got enough to use it. For several sessions. But instead of using Limit Break, I think I'm going to disable all limiters here and just go off on it. Can I activate Burst Mode? Oh. Oh. I've been fucking waiting for someone to say that. Go for it, my guy. I activate burst mode. Absolutely, 100%. Mick, fucking go for it. Alright. I'm... I'm activating NTD. I, I say this in character. You guys don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm about to say, you wanna... You wanna tell the audience what that means? After, I'll explain it. Okay. One second. You got my new icon and all that ready, right? It's not in the roll. It's not in my roll twenty library. Give me a moment to re put right. that in there because it didn't save for whatever fucking reason. Uh. While I refix this, uh, do you want to give a nice uh, description of what you're doing? Okay. Excuse me. NTD, New Type Destroyer. Where I come from, we have to deal with celestial horrors. In order to fight against celestial horrors, we have to create our own celestial horrors. Henry has an idea what I'm about to become. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Is there any, like, Just... energy swirling around you? Is the ground shaking? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, there's, uh... Different colored particles. Like, imagine 
particles just gathering and gathering and gathering into a ball. Mm -hmm. And this ball is like slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And Yasha just grabs the ball and simply just crushes it with his palm of his hands. And then he gets enveloped in white. And that's when he just transforms. Okay. Now, where is the thing I am looking for? We'll play this. Then we will put this on the map. I'm going to make this quite large. All right. Have at it. Keep in mind, in this form, Yashua is three meters tall. I can't make the token that big. No, no, no. Like, in lore, he's three meters tall. He's ten feet tall. Okay. He's he's 10 feet tall and he weighs a ton. So he's a he, he's a beefy boy in this form. Okay. Okay. During a uh, first mode I don't have, um, do I still have to use bullets, or I just have unlimited bullets until it ends? Uh, in burst mode, you, if any attack costs NP or has a special resource, it is zero. Okay, so I'm gonna target her, since she's a very dangerous threat. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And Shining Ward on myself. How much health did you have before you did that? The Shining Ward? No, you. How much health did I have? Oh, I was at uh, 13... 1340? 1350? I lost like 200 and something. Because of the attack she did earlier. We'll just say 1340. Alright. Red. All right, now I get to add all this up. Uh, Mel, is there anything you would like to say in uh, surprise of this revelation that your assumed to be human companion isn't exactly human? Oh my god, no way. Crazy. Um, Henry's not shocked at all. Wild coughs vigorously. Well, we're all from the same world. I'm pretty sure you all should know what an Eidolon is. No. Seriously? While y'all may be from the same place, y'all don't know the same things. What the fuck is an Eidolon? <sighs> Am I missing like, something in the door? No, no, no. From, when, from Rick's personal backstory, yeah. Oh. When... When Yashua talks, his voice sounds like metallic. Like he's a machine. 
like robotic. Like nice. Like, like think of it as he sounds like Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh my god. Voice changer ready for this occasion, but I can't get it working right. Okay, so Yashua is an Eidolon. Momentarily, yes. He cannot keep the form forever, though. I mean, to be fair, at this point, like, you've done some shit, and I haven't been surprised, and I'm like, no, wow, that's insane. So when you turned into that, I'm like, mm, on character. <laughs> very, very on character. Okay, I'm almost done adding up all this damage. Simply put, Eidolons are sentinels. We are the final line of defense. In case a catastrophe were to happen, but since the Devourer came without an invitation, we never got the chance to deploy. Since I'm disconnected from my universe, I can't hold on to this form for very long. I used to be able to permanently hold on to this form. While being here, I cannot. And while you speak, uh, Dreva's reaction is that of shock, surprise, and she is just at a complete loss for words as she has never seen uh, this kind of phenomena take place as even with as far away as you are you can see th the excitement uh, shining in her eyes and she's like what the fuck is that? That's so goddamn cool! And then she regains her composure. And for your series of attacks in burst mode, you have dealt a grand total of 5,773 damage. And through your attacks, uh, there were many, many instances of bullets flying all over the place. Some of them even exploded upon contact. And as each and every one of them hit, Yuzu's body was thrown further and further back to where she not only crashed through the remains of what was left of the bar she also crashed right through the storeroom and is on the other side of the wall where Drava is and with that because you've done all of your attacks uh, you are now under the blessed effects of Hypersoul and you are 100% um, invincible for one attack that comes your way. But afterwards, you will be completely and utterly unable to fight for three turns. I say this in character to everyone, keep in mind, I can only hold on to this form for 10 minutes. After that, I'm going to be defenseless. It really overheats me. Good luck, soldier. And Alora is completely at a loss for words as her mouth is more or less on the floor after seeing what you just saw. These are the kinds of people you're traveling with or work with or what have you? Uh, yep. 
Yes, they are. They're quite neat, if I do say so myself. Can you do something like that? Um, turn into a fucking mecha? No. Oh. No, I cannot. Bitch, what do you mean, oh? <laughs> but look at him, he's so I, cool! She, if it makes you she, feel better, she, I can make my sword three colors. <laughs> she, she points her sword at him. Look at him, he's so cool! Okay, listen. The only cool thing I can do is like... Fucking turn my sword as big as Saber from like Fate Zero, which is fucking fantastic in my I'll defense. Be right back. So don't be rude to me. She has. I get insecure. <laughs> she has no idea what you're talking about. She'll find out when I use my limit break. <laughs> well, Alora, you'll find out when I use my limit break. What's a limit break? You'll find out when I use it. Also, if it makes you feel better, I can make my swords three different colors. Uh, okay. Magic of the elements. That's it. Listen. Listen to me, Alora. Why? I'm just I feel like you're to mocking me. I feel like you're mocking me, Alora. I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything. I just got here. I don't know you're what's correct. going you're on. Good, good shit. Good shit is going on. As a result of the little interaction, uh, Alora is a bit sad and she's trying not to cry. Oh, I can I can I roll uh, like perception or something and notice that she's about to cry? Uh, that would be insight. Insight, got it. You can very clearly tell that she is on the verge of tears after you <laughs> spoke the way that you did. <laughs> And then Alora's like, and then I'm like, Alora, I'm joking, I'm kidding. Can I like, can I like signal her to come fly towards me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just like, um, like gesture her to come and fly towards me. It's like, Alora, I'm kidding. And Hopefully I can train you to be as badass as that fucker over there, okay? As she flies towards you... She tells you to look out because the fire spirit thing is swinging its weapon at you. So if my reaction- okay, so like, can I dodge it? If you want to. Yes? How? Oh, 1D- the 1D thing, or? No, this is the f the fire elemental right next to you. I'm gonna fucking- uh-uh. I'm gonna- no, never mind. Gonna bigger than I was gonna say I'm gonna absorb fire onto my sword. But that doesn't work. I know ice is good versus fire. Right? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna dodge and then cast ice on my sword and like begin battle. Okay. Let's see, you are now engaged in combat with the fire elemental. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna cast ice first. Um Where's my eyes? Oh, blizzard, there we go. <laughs> I got scared for a second, I thought I was imagining things. <laughs> okay. So you use Spellblade Blizzard on your weapon. <gasps> yep. Excuse me. Then. Wait. Oh, am I ready? Before you continue, okay. you are still holding use a sword in your hands. Or, I guess, now in one of your hands. Cast ice on that sword as well. No, because you will be overriding the lightning that is on that weapon. Or, not lightning, uh, darkness that is on that weapon. Okay, so basically I have a double wielding, so I'm fucking double wielding. Let's go. I'm double wielding this shit. You also have temper on you. What? you Drava cast what? that on you a long time ago. Wait, what's temper again? All of your attacks hit twice for one turn. God... Well, let the games begin! Fucking double whammying this goddamn fire bitch. Right? Is thunder like this thunder cure it? Cure what? Fire. No. Okay, good. Cause I, I don't know, last time you did some weird bullshit like that and it made me cry. 
Because I forgot to like put cure on my sword and I ended up like healing the enemy. Oh yeah, because you hit it with the all same All the damage element. I did. Listen to me. It still makes me cry. Okay. Bro, just, just simply prison katana is just my sexiest ability. Wait, I'm a bit far from it, so... Okay. No, never mind. I'm in. I'm within melee range. Okay, prison katana, this motherfucker to the ground. One, two, three. It's dead. Also, 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 my first attack is also a crit. Do you know why? <laughs> because I fucking dodged that woman's attack. Yeah, that's why I stopped you. <laughs> and that's why I stopped you on the third roll. Ooh, oh my god. Alright, so fire enemy, uh, not enemy, elemental, dead, and I don't count. And with that enemy dying, the portal that it was standing in front of grows a bit bigger, and you can just barely see through it as the ice priest turns his attention from the portal to you. Oh. Now, you have... Hello. You have three actions left. Okay. Um... So, if it's an ice bitch and my sword is ice, I need to change that to thunder. Okay. I'm gonna cast thunder on my sword. And now I have a thunder sword and another thunder sword, which makes me just giga thunder. And you have two actions left. Okay, Riku, 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 Riku. Mm -hmm. Can I? Okay, I know it's not realistic, but can I like pang both of my swords together to create just like this massive ass fucking thunderbolt coming from the sky? Can I do that? You want to hold both of the swords together? As in like no pang both of them together, basically like. Oh, you want to hit them together? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I want to do that. I don't know how the fuck to roll the damage of that, but. Uh... Whoa. Two thunder spells make thunder two, and that, so I basically cause thunder two. <laughs> that is two d seven plus your magic attack. However, because you are holding user's weapon in your hands, instead of it being your magic attack, it's going to be her oh. magic attack. Broken. So it's two d seven plus four seventy five. How do I do? Okay, so do I roll 2d7? Yeah. Okay, so roll d7. Plus 475. whoop -ha! Okay. That comes out to... I'm so hot. 731. Minus... That up there... Okay, you've got one action left. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna present Katana. Mm. <laughs> Alright, it's Thunder Resist has gone down. It's gonna take another. It's gonna take a bonus 50 uh, damage from thunder attacks when it is next. When it is when it is next struck with a thunder attack. And after being hit by all of that, the ice priest speaks to you, and he says, "What manner of insanity?" is plaguing all of you. Do you not want this realm to be saved? Why are you repeatedly stopping us from doing what we're here to do? Because the way you guys are gonna do it is very unjust. Don't you agree? <laughs> if we don't do it, no one else is going to make a conscious effort to even try or think about it. So, where is the harm in 
forcefully convincing those who want to try and do something to do something. Be very like, okay, we're gonna take a few step backs in your words. First of all, the forcefully part, don't you think that people should have their own free will in deciding their own choices? Those that what if they don't do want to be saved? free will. Oh, then what makes you think you're saving them? Because we're putting them to use. Yes, but what if they don't want that to be their use? That's your perception of what they want, correct? Then why would they, they come want? to us at their lowest point in life? How do they? Or did you lure them in? Convincing them of something greater when it's in fact not necessarily there. What ultimately matters at the end of the day, you can tell that he is very stubborn and set in his ways. What matters at the end of the day is that we are doing what others will not. What is this white supremacy? Okay, can I just like aggro and fight him instead? Because TB, I don't want to listen to his words anymore. Based off of like my characters. I mean, you've already been fighting him. And I'm gonna fight him even more. So it's just that on. your your turn has ended. Oh okay. shit! Never mind. I'm back. Okay. Uh, can I'll I back. slap this uh priest in the back of the head? Because I didn't know I was muted <laughs> for saying such ridiculous things. Um. When your next turn comes around, you can because it is currently Drava's turn. Alright, cool. I'm gonna look at Drava's like, Drava, can you fuck him up, please? Um, in response to that, she says, I would, but our main target is on the other side of the wall, right in front of me. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to move her as far away from me as possible, because she hit me earlier, and I don't want to be hit again. Drava, I say this with like a booming heavy voice. Throw her towards me. And as you say that, uh, she had already started uh, casting Eroga. She's going to use her... Wait, before I do that. Yeah, she's going to use her entire turn pushing Yuza back over to you. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And instead, she stops. And she rams her staff into the ground. And she says, you know what? On second thought, I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. And in this instance, she too is going to store as much power as she can into her staff before releasing that energy into herself and she is going to activate her own burst mode we're going to stop this and then we're going to play this why do i hear boss music <laughs> why do i hear boss music <laughs> So, with Drava being in her burst mode for the first time that you all are seeing this, to her, it's something that she has only done once before, and you can see that she is floating very high in the air. Her eyes are the darkest shade of crimson that you have seen yet you can see that her nails have grown 
quite a bit. And that her hair appears to be just flowing in place. And she is going to use her own limit break once I find it. Uh, we're gonna go one, two. As I roll a crit for her, okay. Uh, three. So that's our limit break damage. And then I'm going to roll. Oh, I know this song from somewhere. Okay, that's that for the D20. Alright. Uh, amidst her just slinging spells out like crazy, she's going to grab Yuza by the throat. And she is going to you when she's going to look over at you all. She's going to give a very obvious smirk. And then the next thing you hear is a roar of a dragon. Oh god, dragon's roar. Well, I'm immune, so. Yeah, you you are immune. But, because the attack was negated, the invincibility part of your hyper soul is over. Okay. And as she does all that, because of the sudden, sudden burst of energy, and her body not exactly being accustomed to that. She immediately drops back down to the ground, uh, releasing Yuza from her grip. And <clears throat> all of you, please roll perception. Okay, uh, Yashua and Mel, you can very clearly see that she has pushed herself way past anything she had done before. And if you wish, uh, you may roll uh, athletics to try and Prevent her from falling over due to said exhaustion. And Mel got the winning roll. Haha! <laughs> uh, as for the damage that uh, Drava did during her burst phase attacks. She is dealt seven thousand eight hundred and seventy-two damage, and I will move Java's token over by uh, Mel and Laura since uh, she was prevented from falling over. Okay, uh, as a result of all of that, you can see that Yuza is going through far more pain than previously, as now there seem to be spirits and such uh, bursting out of her and flying out of her in, 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 in wild directions and you can see 
and hear her and hear her say uh, help me and when I say see you can physically see the words help me appear above her head that's creepy you can we should put her out of her misery <laughs> Drevo. Wait, who's Missouri? Yuza. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought you said Drevo for a second. I'm just like, hmm? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Uh, it is... It is Henry's turn, but uh, Drevo manages to choke out through her exhaustion. Uh... Even though we're putting him out of her out of her misery, um, there's very clearly something wrong with her spirit itself. But I don't think there's anything we can really do to help her. My thoughts exactly. Right, Henry, you may do what whatever it is you wish to do. So this chick is almost dead. Yes. Okay. I got butcher. <laughs> oh. Fire five times. All right. With those series of fire attacks, the user's HP has dropped far below zero, and with her death. The other enemies in the area that have been working on their own respective portals or summoning circles or what have you, they fade away, and as she continues to, to, to scream through the flames, a large and mysterious purple smoke goes flying right out of her and is frantically circling around in the air almost as if it is looking for a target of sorts and before long it looks at the Ice Priest, and as it makes a beeline over to said priest, a familiar black smoke goes flying right out of you, well, by out of you, I mean out of uh, Mel and Yashua in his current form, you hear Garland very loudly say absolutely not and when he takes physical form he is gripping this spirit like smoke and clenches his fist so hard that it dissipates And just as quickly as he came, he leaves just as, just as fast. 
And with all of the obvious enemies defeated, uh, you all have indeed won. But a user's body ceases to be on fire, but it's still it's it's still here. Strangely. And now you all deserve your victory reward. Alright. So I'll tell you all now. Uh both your main classes and your subclasses have leveled up. Lit. Lit. Does that mean I can finally use one of my moves? Oh my god, it's time. The fucking broken shit. Temperance. By you leveling up, uh, Alora has also gained a level. Ooh! Can I high five her with like her tiny ass hands? Um. Let's let, let's say this. Uh. Because the both of you have grown in power, and you can see Alora uh, frantically examining herself as to why she suddenly grew several stages brighter oh you look over to her and you motion for a high five and she follows suit hey let me also play this okay so with all that said and done out of the way Once the adrenaline from everything dissipates, you all happen to notice that those portals that the other enemies were guarding are still here, and they haven't vanished. This one here, and this one there? And this one over here. Oh, I didn't even notice that one. And with the one that is the closest to you, uh, earlier I mentioned that once Mel and Alora defeated the fire elemental enemy that was guarding it, it grew in size, and that you could just barely see through it. Can I take a peek? Uh, yes, yes, you may. Uh, please roll perception, though. Uh, perception. Okay. Uh, you look through it, and you can see uh, many, many many bodies on the other side of this portal and a few splotches of blood. You also see a mirror and through this mirror you can see what appears to be a very ornate treasure chest. is red with gold trimming it has an obnoxiously large lock on it and as you try to crane your head to see if you can see anything else around the treasure chest uh, you can make out a bar stool mm -hmm. Is it possible for me to use 
Actually, no, it's a portal. I don't think I could just make the hole bigger just by trying to. Uh, no, you may not. Well, currently I'm still in burst mode, so I don't fit in there. <laughs> also that, you are... You are significantly larger than the portal itself, so you cannot enter in your current form. Oh yeah, like, imagine a 10 feet tall mech sentinel that's just crouching on his knees, just trying to see what the hell's in there. Right. I think there's a bar in there. That's the first thing that comes out of his uh, mouth. And blood. Who's who's the shortest out of all of us here? The short Looks at the face. Not counting Allura. No, 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 no. I. I say that, but then I immediately look at the fairy. And, and then I ask the fairy, would you mind going in there and having a closer look? You don't have to if you're too afraid to. Um, in response to that, she shudders, and to Mel, she says, absolutely the hell not but to <laughs> you all you hear is <laughs> while everybody's arguing henry just runs in and grabs the chest uh are you sh yes i'm sure uh huh. i'll laugh if the portal closes This is what we're gonna do. Where are my dice? This is what we're gonna do for this. Oh my god. I don't like your tone, or you can. One. Two. <clears throat> Three. Oh no. Four. Five. So, in your haste, before even considering the possible danger of just running inside, you run inside to grab what you think was the right way to the treasure chest you step on a red summoning circle and you are thrown right back out of said uh, portal and you have a curse on your forehead it is a very obvious marking is a very dangerous looking marking and when your allies see it instead of seeing you they see a flicker of a very large devil-like creature with wings appear in front of them before it fades away Henry, Yashua says with concern. Are you okay? Nope. If I don't know any better, I think that was a curse. Or you've been marked to death. I don't know. Roll a wisdom... Save, Henry. You have a thought in your head that says nothing but kill. 
and as soon as you have the thought it fades away and you do not adhere to it. And Dreva, she looks at you and for a moment she is angry that you ran in without even thinking but when she looks at you again she is terrified of what she sees and she is so terrified that she is slowly backing away from everyone Um, Henry walks closer to Driva. Guys, and as you walk closer, she says, Get the hell away from me! As she is pointing her staff in your direction. <laughs> Joshua asks Driva, What's wrong? Um, long story short, he has been cursed by a demon known as Diablos. The other issue is that it, it could take control of him at any given moment and kill us. It's also incredibly contagious. So I recommend being as far away from him as possible until something is done about this. I'm going to assume that uh, you casting Asuna is not going to work on that. Absolutely not. You hear like a metallic sigh coming out of Yashua. <sighs> Hey, everybody has a fancy new thing. I get a fancy demon controlling me. Thank you, Hussein. Maybe he'll be my friend. Roll Arcana. Thank God my Arcana is super high. It'll be cool if Henry will learns to overpower the demon and just takes control of it. Demon bat following me Uh, so... That tells me a kill. That roll compared to my own roll... Uh... You hear a voice... In your head... And all you hear is sinister laughter as you feel a disgustingly searing pain in your right arm. And Zero says over the communicator, give us an update. What's going on? And he says that to Yashua. Yashua Henry. replies, Our mission's complete. Henry's just blocking his head on the summer. We're in, in the corner. Well, I say this in a metallic voice because I'm still in this form. Mission complete. All enemies neutralized. We have secured their HQ. Okay. Uh... Can you do the robot dance? Do you want to explain what kind of interference is going on here? You sound different. And I don't know if that's good or bad. It's good, but, but there's nothing wrong with me. I'll explain later. Um, okay, what about the rest of you? What? I'm not okay, I'm not okay! <laughs> Everyone, 
minus Harry, uh, Henry, is. I'm not Henry. Harry uh, <laughs> Henry uh, I believe he got cursed by what Dreva called Diablos. Do you know what that is? And to that, Satan. You, you hear Zero drop his phone and pick it back up. What the fuck did you just say? And with that, session ends for today. Oh, that was an interactive and fun session. I'm hitting the stop recording button in 10 seconds. Please sponsor us. Please, please sponsor us. Like this video and Yashua will appear in your birthday party in his mech suit. And that's 10 that's seconds. That's a nice birthday party. I thought you were going to say birthday.